Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg and this is the iCare K1 Pro Laser Machine. This is a long awaited feature packed laser diode machine. In this video, I'm going to be doing the unboxing of the machine, just real high level. I just wanna show you how it's packaged in the box. While I'm doing that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the company name iCare if you're not familiar with them. I'm then going to move on and connect and configure the machine using Lightburn software and then do a little mini project just to see initially the machine in action. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me in this first initial look at the iCare K1 Pro laser machine. Without any further ado, I'm going to start and open this box. Now, I was contacted by IKEA a few months ago about creating some content and they first started by stating who IKEA was and how they were related to Atom Stack. I've already have an Atom Stack machine and that machine has performed flawlessly. So Atom Stack is already a well-known quality brand machine. And where IKEA falls into place is Atom Stack acquired IKEA and they're using the iCare brand name and technologies as the flagship high performance laser machine. And right away on top, I'm greeted by some manuals here. I'm gonna collect all of these and place these off to the side. Wow, the top down view of this is everything has its nice neat little compartments. And I'll pull out the star of the show and this is the laser module. We'll take a look at this right away. This thing is absolutely huge. This is the 24 watt laser module, and this is an absolute beast of a unit. And the next compartment here has the air assist pump, which is a good point that this machine at the price point with the high power laser module still includes an air assist pump. That air assist pump can be controlled from the application software. If you're doing some delicate engraving and you do not want the air assist pump on, you can have that turn off via the software. And here's the nice touchscreen display that goes on the front of the machine. I'm going to move my computer out of the way to make room for all of these pieces and parts. So there is going to be some assembly on this. I was hoping that it would be essentially uh, all pre-assembled, but the side rails are pre-assembled with the belts and that tends to kind of trip some people up is getting the belts tensioned correctly and this already has them installed so need, no need to worry there. And the side rail already has the wiring harness installed, further simplifying the assembly process. And this is the front beam of the machine and this has the controller board inside and it has a multitude of all these ports on there and we'll be checking that out in just a little bit. Now that the shipping box is out of the way, I'm going to spend a minute off camera taking inventory of all the parts here. I'm going to familiarize myself with the instruction manual. And then I'll show you a time-lapse of the machine going together. The assembly time took me about 40 minutes. I would expect that if I was not filming this, it would take me about a half hour. The extra time spent is that I was assembling the machine mirrored from my perspective. I had the machine assembled facing towards you, the audience, whereas the manual shows many of the illustrations showing the machine towards me. So, and that took me just a few minutes here and there to properly orientate myself to the manual. Again, everything went very smoothly following the instructions. There's a couple areas that did take me a little bit longer and that is there's a connection rod that goes across the front and that keeps these two ends aligned with one another. 
That took me just a few minutes to really go through the manual and made sure that I understood it correctly. The second part that took me a little bit extra is underneath this corner of this top cover, it gets pretty tight in there. There's several large connections and there's a pulley that runs back and forth. And it took, again, just a few extra minutes to make sure that the connections were properly secured and not rubbing up against that belt or pulley. Overall, I'm very impressed with how cleanly the machine went together. The frame bolts together with multiple bolts in all four corners. This is a self-squaring machine, so there's no need to measure diagonally or put a carpenter square in the corners. Just slowly snug down all the bolts in the corners and the machine will perfectly right itself. During the assembly of the machine, there's a lot of cool things that I saw in the construction and I wanna show you just a couple close-ups of that before heading into light burn. One of the keys to having a smooth running and very accurate machine is the guide rail system. And on this machine, they're located down here on either side of the machine. And when we take a closer look of that, and I get the camera down inside of the machine, there we go. That guide rail is about the diameter of my finger. And that guide rail, again, there's going to be one on either side of the machine. And that guide rail connects up to a nice long bearing in here, making sure that this is very precise and tight fitting. Underneath this long cover here is a linear rail. I've used that in my previous career and we had those Anytime we wanted smooth wearing components that were ultra precise. On the side of the laser module and the height adjustment, there's two screws that secure the two together. The screws are already installed from the factory. In fact, I had to back mine out just a little bit to fit the laser module into this track. And I found that if I ever run out of room where I need to raise the laser module or lower it down, this rail system built into the laser module allows for this to move up and down, be retightened, and then still allows for the autofocus to take over and set that perfect focus distance. Now that I've got some of the highlights of the assembly covered, I'm now ready to jump into Lightburn software and connect the computer up to the machine and get some motion going. I have the machine powered on. I have the USB cable connected between the machine and my computer. When I jump into Lightburn software, the main thing that I'm going to look at when connecting up for the first time is down in this area. And when I open my version of Lightburn, it naturally grabs the first machine that I ever added to Lightburn. If I pull down the menu here, we'll see all the other machines, but by default, it grabs the one off the top of the list and I want to make sure that this section here, where it would normally say what COM port the machine is being connected to, I want to make sure that this says choose. If it says anything other than that, the software will not automatically detect a new machine connected to the Lightburn software. This is set correctly right now. I can click on devices and find my laser. Click next. And it'll spend just a second here as it goes out and searches for a machine. And here it found that already. I'll click add device. And I'm going to label this K1 Pro. Next, I'll ask where the origin of the laser is going to be. This is just another way of saying when the machine homes, where are those limit switches being met? And on this machine, it's going to be up in this front left hand corner, and that's where it's defaulted to, front left. The next item is auto home your laser on startup. I always disable this because when I power on the machine, I don't want the machine already moving in case I left something in there from a previous project. I don't want that motion on startup. This looks good and I can click next. And this all looks correct. I'll click on finish and OK. And now I can pull this menu down and I will look for K1 Pro. 
and it's set to auto and it says laser is ready. It's now time for the moment of truth. I'm going to hit the home button and I'll see if I've got motion on the machine. Hey, look at that, it's moving. That was pretty quick and easy to connect the Lightburn software up to the K1 laser machine. That looks good. I'm gonna load a graphic in and do a quick little mini project. I've loaded my graphic into Lightburn. We're gonna check that out in just a second. In the work area, I installed a piece of honeycomb because I will be doing some cutting and the work material is quarter inch Baltic plywood. Back in Lightburn, here's the figure that I loaded in and I have everything that is in black is set to fill. Let's take a closer look at the settings. The speed is 400 millimeters per second at a power of 95%. I'm not sure what this is going to do, but we'll learn together. I have the lines per inch set at essentially 300 and over scanning is turned on. On the cut line for the blue line here, I have a speed of 12 millimeters per second at a power of 100%. I'm ready to place the goggles on and hit the start button. That almost cut all the way through. I'm gonna turn off the engraving layer and do one more pass on just the cutout. Look at that, drops right out. We'll get a close up. Got a little bit of smoke coming through yet. Here's a nice close up, all the nice detail all across this. This thing went crazy fast. I did initially have a concern if the machine was going to be shaking, but it ran very, very smooth. This is a great project to showcase the speed and power of the K1 laser machine. On the cutout, I did do several passes, but again, in Lightburn, when I was plugging in settings, I grabbed some pretty aggressive settings and that speed of 12 millimeters per second is pretty zippy. I'm sure if I slowed that down just a little bit, the machine could easily cut through this quarter inch birch plywood. There's certainly a ton of features that I wanna show you all on this machine, but it's really hard to do that all in one video, but I do have time to show you some of the features and the menus on the touchscreen. First thing I'll do is remove the protective cover off the front. And we can see all the clean, crisp detail that this touchscreen brings to us. The first thing I'll show you is the settings. When I go in here, I've got the system language and that has a multitude of different languages that you can select on here. And it does have an operating mode for fast, standard, or fine. This has to do when you're running a program directly from the HMI. We have a tilt detection on the machine. I'll activate that. And a flame detection. I'll also activate that. And we'll see across the top here, I start getting some icons that show up showing that those features are active on the machine. Arrowing over to the next menu, we can enable the autofocus. We can also resume engraving. So that is one of the neat things that this machine can do is if you are running it from the touchscreen or the IKEA app, if the machine loses power in the middle of a project, it can resume exactly where it left off. Now in here, of course, each time I touch the screen, I do get a notification beep. And down here is auxiliary positioning. The last screen shows the system information on the machine. It has the engraving size and what firmware is installed on the machine. And this is April 11th of 2023. So this machine has, I mean, it's just been built and this is about as quick as they could load the software and send it over here to my studio. When I hit back, that takes us back to the first page of the setup. Back at the main menu system, when I go into the engrave area, 
This will show what programs you have loaded on the included USB stick. There is one down here. When I click on that, the fan for the laser engraver turns on and it has all of these settings here. I can manually move or jog the machine around. I can tell it to home. They'll tell me that that was a success. And I can back out of this once again to the main menu. And here we are. So a very clean, very slick layout to easily navigate throughout the HMI screen on the K1 laser machine. My initial thoughts on this machine is it's definitely powerful. It is really fast. And most of all, it is incredibly smooth. These are all traits and all features that this machine there's been a lot of hype and a lot of excitement about it. And everything that I've seen so far is it is living up to all those expectations. There's certainly a lot more features that I'd love to share with you on this machine, but those are going to take place in future videos. I definitely want to take a look at the autofocus feature on the machine. There's a little bit of setup that needs to be done in Lightburn software, but that autofocus feature is available using Lightburn. I enjoyed sharing the first look and experiences with the iKear K1 Pro machine. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel or ringing that notification bell. It really helps me out. It helps the channel grow, but most of all, it's a great way to connect content like this with great viewers like you. Until next time, learn, create, and share.